I, I want to um, talk more about the, the cleansing of the temple because I think this is a really interesting um, scene because I think a common portrayal of uh, Jesus, people who haven't really read the, the gospel, right, is he's this, you know, kumbaya, you know, right. love the neighbor, don't get mad at him, don't get angry at him. Uh, everything's, you know, peaceful and great. Um, but this is a scene where he really gets angry and turns everything upside down. Jesus cleanses the temple. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out of the temple, saying, Hosanna to the highest, to the son of David. Um, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. He left them, went out of the city to, Beth to Bethany, and spent the night there. Yeah, I think we talked about this before when we talked about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and where he talks about the cities and how the cities who have uh, rejected him will be worse off than the biblical cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's definitely something that we see often with him that he's not um, a meek uh, character, right? He has principles that he stands by, and that's part of uh, being a, a morally virtuous person. Mm. So I think that's what we see here. And it's interesting that he says, so uh, the idea that the temple is for prayer Right, that's what I noted. So it's it's about looking up. It's about looking to the divine, and it's not about looking down to our earthly means and our earthly possessions. Right. So that's why he's he's saying this. This is not the proper place to um, be dealing with uh, money. Right. To be dealing with our own interests. This is a place to look higher up. Right. So everything has its proper place, and then. At the at the center of the religion is right the temple and then the the proper place for the temple is actually to look up and in the Jewish tradition is actually an even more central place which is the uh, holiest of holies right the the center of the the room where um, God resides right where he's um, he he is more present than not and that obviously does not mean that there God is not omnipresent but the idea is that there are certain places where um, his energy is felt more um, and that people can call on that energy. And of course, this goes into later Christian tradition with the role of the church. Mm. I also think it's quite interesting. I don't know what your translation says, but for me, it says that it's Jesus cleanses the temple, right? Uh, so how does he cleanse the temple? He um, drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables and the seats. Um, so he basically, basically gets really angry, <laughs> but like he cleanse that's like him cleansing it is like turning right. everything upside down. It, my one doesn't say uh, anything about cleansing. Mm. It just says he, he enters the temple. Oh, or maybe that's just unique to my translation, but I do think it's an interesting idea and it shows a different side of Jesus than I think a lot of people are used to. And also maybe shows his human side. Yeah, well, that's another big thing that we talked about before when we talked about the transfiguration, that whilst it is trying to talk about his divinity, it is also equally trying to emphasize his humanity. Um, but yeah, I think here we, we have a classic case of uh, what we'd call like righteous wrath, right? That it's that these things at their proper place, and this goes back to what we said about proper place, right? So everything has its own proper place. So like anger, for example, and wrath, obviously has been treated as a, a sinful thing in the church, but it's related to when it's being used, right? So this is the proper place to be angry, right? <laughs> is, is when people are doing something unjust, right? So that's when you actually should be angry. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I think the main 
point of the story is that everything has its proper right place. Um, I did want to mention just that we do have, again, this continuance, so everything's connected. We have the talk about um, the Old Testament and how Jesus is fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy, like we mentioned at the beginning, uh, to do with uh, the Matthew Gospel, that it's uh, directed towards the Jewish audience. Right. And then we also have children again, which we talked about uh, yes, before. Yes, that is true. These these themes, you see, keep on, on coming back. Um yeah, for sure. I mean, even like the Matthew, the very beginning of Matthew is directly about Jesus fulfilling the prophecy mm -hmm. with the lineage. Um, so spot on there. 